to judge or not to judge? That is the question that we're asking. The Bible, God's Word, gives us the answer. You know, there are some who believe that you shouldn't say anything to a brother or sister in Christ uh, when you see them going astray, or you shouldn't judge uh, what they are doing. Is that what the Bible teaches? I believe Paul said that we should exhort, we should re uh, reprove, and we should rebuke uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. But God's Word has the answer to this question, and let's see what God has to say. I pray that you are blessed as you watch this message. Christianity, the judgment-free zone. Be blessed. Megan Good and Megan Fox have a lot in common. Both are Hollywood actresses. They both are about the same age. They are both named Megan. Both have been typecast as sexy and have portrayed characters as such on screen. But the most important similarity is this. Both say that they are born again believers who love the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart. So, do we leave it at that, or do we, as instructed in Scripture, to examine the fruit? We are told, beloved, to believe not every spirit, but to try or test the spirit, whether it be of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Believe it or not, there is a move to carnalize and sensualize Christianity. Many have come into agreement with Megan Good in an interview that she did with D.L. Hughley, where she speaks against judgmental Christians or churchgoers. I will quote some of the things that she said in her interview later. But are we not, especially as followers of Jesus Christ, to judge things? Not just in the realm of godliness, but in everyday life. In just reading the title of this article alone, some have placed judgment already without taking the time to read this article or view the entire video. So having judgment is a normal part of life. Before you become friends with someone or before you decide to date or marry someone, don't you size them up first? You mark their character, their habits, good and bad. You take notice of their family and how they grew up, their education and job, or financial status. So you see, in essence, you are judging. Megan Fox in 2013 said that her Christian faith is still very important to her, and she believes it keeps her grounded. With regard to relationships and her sexuality, Fox said that she has a general distrust and dislike of men, and that the perception of her as a wild and crazy sex pot is false because she is asocial and has only been sexually intimate with her childhood sweetheart and Brian Austin Green, and emphasized that she cannot have sex with someone she does not love. 
she is bisexual and said she believes that all humans are born with the ability to be attracted to both sexes. I have no question in my mind about being bisexual, Fox stated, but I am also a hypocrite. I would never date a girl who was bisexual because that means they also sleep with men and men are so dirty that I'd never want to sleep with a girl who had slept with a man. So how is this being a born again believer when you are sexually attracted to not only men, but to women? Does not the scripture speaks against homosexuality? But anyway, she claims to be born again. Fox admits she is a devout Christian and often feels overcome by religious fever when she attends church services. She tells Esquire magazine, the energy is so intense in the room that you feel like anything can happen. I have seen magical, crazy things happen, says Fox. Fox will appear as the cover girl in the February issue of Esquire magazine, where she opens up about speaking in tongues, similar to the biblical account described in Acts 2, 1 through 4. To interject, the tongues spoken uh, in Acts were known tongues because there were Jews there from other parts of the world. Fox and the wife of actor Brian Austin Green, who recently gave birth to a son last September, said she is making church a priority these days. In the Esquire feature story, she described what it feels like to speak in tongues. Fox says, it feels like a lot of energy coming through the top of your head. I'm going to sound like such a lunatic and then your whole body is filled with electric current and you just start speaking but you're not thinking because you have no idea what you're saying words are coming out of your mouth and you can't control it the actress explained to the publication the idea is that it is a language that only god understands it's the language that's spoken in heaven it is called getting the Holy Ghost. End of quote. This sounds more like Kondalini than a genuine infilling of the Holy Ghost. To help you to understand what Kondalini looks like, it is similar to what is seen in churches today when a minister, bishop, prophet, or what have you lay hands on the head of an individual and the individual falls out under the supposed power of the Holy Spirit. What is really happening is a doorway into the souls of those affected by the laying on of hands has now been opened, giving evil spirits access to the recipient. But through Jesus Christ, there is hope. Of course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a kundalini awakening. And amazingly, it is exact the same as what we have been seeing. Megan Good is steadfast in her Christian beliefs, but says she doesn't attend church as much as she'd like to due to overcritical church goers. While talking about a sex scene in her new film, The Intruder, the 37-year-old actress told D.L. Hughley on his infamous radio show that her husband Devon Franklin, a Seventh-day Adventist preacher as well as a film exec and author, doesn't interfere with her love scenes. 
He encourages her to make them authentic on screen. And she gives it her all with Michael Alley in the drama. Your job is your occupation. Being a Christian determines your occupation. So the motivation is money. She's very religious. She said Jesus tops her list of heroes and she and Franklin were celibate before marrying, but has some issues with some other members of the church who are quick to attack and judge. So what are they judging that is making her so uncomfortable? Is it because she's doing love scenes on screen with a man that she's not married to? And she's a married woman and professes to be a Christian. And her husband doesn't find anything wrong with this. Is this what she's been critical about? Well, it seems to me that when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, regardless to what you did in the past, your occupation, if it's in, in, in ways violates your Christian beliefs, you would find another occupation. But this is something that it appears she's not willing to do because of the money factor. And so this is what her problem is. And this is what she calls over critical churchgoers. So she's very religious and she says Jesus tops her list of heroes. Uh, ask if she attends church with Franklin often. Good replied, not all the time, though, because I am being very completely honest. My experience with some church folks has not been that positive. Understand that everyone that goes to church is not saved. Everyone is not looking for a closer walk with Jesus. Some have their own agendas. So if what they are saying is not true, then it should not bother you. But if what they are saying has merit, then maybe there should be a self-examination. She continued, It's unfortunate because we're supposed to be the biggest lovers, she said, of Christians. Even if you disagree with someone or you don't think what they are doing is right, you're supposed to mind your own business and pray for that person. Other times you are supposed to correct and love if that's what God has told you to do. And there was no correction in love. It was like a complete assault. Well, in my experience, when you try to correct somebody in love, people seem to get offended. You know, so when a person doesn't want to do what is right, no matter how softly you try to correct them about something they're doing that is wrong, they will take it in an offensive way. And so in their minds, it is not being, they're not showing love. They're not correcting you with love. So this is a problem we have with uh, people who say that they are Christians following Jesus, but they're actually carnal in their nature and in their understanding. The Think Like a Man star went on to say, at the end of the day, for me, I still love Christians. I will always love the church. I love my Lord and Savior, period, point blank. That's first and foremost over everything. But even though I love some of those people, I have to love them from a distance because, quote, my spirit is too sensitive, unquote. You know, this is a pitiful display of pride, arrogance, and self-centeredness. Did she ever once think that maybe the Lord was using those people to correct her behavior? Scripture says that the Holy Spirit comes to reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. In saying my spirit is too sensitive, is fleshly. It is another way of saying, leave me alone. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mind your own business. And so we see a lot of Christians taking this attitude, or a lot of supposedly Christians 
taking this type of attitude. You know, mind your own business. Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. And so uh, many of these people are not um, grounded in Christ. Um, they would be classified as babes. Even, I mean, if they were sincere about their Christian walk. And so when you try to hold on to the world and say that you're a Christian, uh, you're defeating yourself. You either love the Lord with all your heart or you don't love him at all. And this is the trend. This is what we are seeing in this new uh, trend of carnal Christianity and fleshly uh, uh, Christians coming on the rise. They're trying to change the meaning of what it is to be a true Christian. And they're using Hollywood. They're using celebrities. They're using uh, uh, hip hop artists and these people to define what Christianity is. And many people are falling for that deception. See, what messes people up is that they do not understand God's definition on judgment. So they only understand it from a worldly and carnal aspect. I've even said in some of my other writings that it seems that more and more believers are getting their understanding of scripture from secular stars and folks in the spotlight rather than from true servants of the Lord. And this being sympathetic with Megan Good is one example of that. Scripture tell us that in the latter days men will not endure sound doctrine, but will cling to those who will preach what sounds good, what does not convict of sin, and what pleases the flesh. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they will turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. What is the biblical definition of judging? It is to condemn someone of the same sin that you are practicing yourself. We see that in Romans 2 verse 1. To see the fault in another while dismissing your own in Matthew 7, 3. To condemn someone without giving them the hope of repentance, John 8, 4 through 7. We are told to examine ourselves. He says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. This scripture is very clear. A lot of people are claiming to be in the faith, but when they examine themselves and they're still fleshly and carnal, they are not in the faith. And then he said, prove your own selves. A lot of times people will say, I don't have to prove anything to you. Well, this is not what the scripture says. We have to prove our own selves. And by proving our own selves, people will see the fruit and then it will become quite evident that we are children of God because we don't do the same things that we used to do. We don't speak the way we used to speak. We don't attend the, the, the carnal functions of partying and clubbing and uh, orgies and all these type of things that we used to do. And he said, know ye not your own selves, know your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So if Jesus Christ is not in us, we are reprobates. And if we're continuing to practice the same lifestyle, we are reprobates. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 says, Judge not that ye be not judged. And this is a scripture that many like to use that are carnal. Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. They quote the scripture out of context. And we're going to read it here to see exactly what Jesus is talking about. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. See, we've already, I've already given you the definition of judging. So when you judge somebody for something that you are practicing, and you judge them harshly, that same judgment will come back to you. And Jesus goes on to say, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam 
is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. You see, this is the, the bottom line. You can't judge a person for something that you are practicing and doing, and you haven't seen your own faults. Jesus said, first get yourself together. And then you will be able to help your brother get himself or herself together if they are willing. So you really can't use that defense. Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. So that defense is, is out. Luke 6, 37 through 46 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet out, with all it shall be measured to you again. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but let every one that is perfect be as his master. See, this is what Jesus is saying. The blind can't lead the blind. So if you are carnal and you want to continue to live a lifestyle that is not in a line with what Jesus requires of his followers, then you are blind and you're trying to lead somebody else. They will be blind also. And he said, both of you will fall into the ditch and many are falling into the ditch of uh, carn carnality and uh, fleshliness. Uh, even today. And listen to what Jesus said, that the, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect. Listen, this is what Jesus is saying. But everyone that is perfect, we are to strive for perfection. He said, shall be as his master. So there is a requirement on those that will follow Christ. You have to leave this fleshliness behind. You have to leave the love for the world behind. Because having the love for the world will tie you up and bind you and have and, and, and cause you to uh, have a weak Christian uh, walk. You will not walk in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit, but you will give way to everything that is going on in the world today. This is why so many Christians are in love with homosexuality and they love those that are practicing homosexuality and they see nothing wrong with it. And they are fighting for homosexual rights because they're still carnal. God's word is against homosexuality. We love the people, but we don't fight for their rights. We don't fight uh, for, their, for justice. Verse 41, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? How canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye? When thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye, thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. Every tree is known by its own fruit. If you testify that you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you will not be consistently practicing your former life. You will not uh, be giving yourself over to those things that are not of God. He goes on to say, For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble branch gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And he listen, Jesus says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So what did Jesus mean here? It is very simple. One cannot say that they love the Lord and continue to live a sinful lifestyle. Romans 2, 1 through 2 says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. 
And remember, we already talked about the definition of judging. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. We can't condemn a person uh, when we make judgments. We just see what is wrong. We, we tell them what is wrong. And it's up to them to correct it. Even the Bible tells us that uh, even things in nature are judged. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 12, 54, 57 to the Pharisees. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. So they're placing a judgment. And when you see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat and it cometh to pass. Jesus said, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that you do not discern this time? And why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? To discern means to judge. Jesus was upset with these religious leaders because although they could make judgment calls, on the atmospheric conditions, yet they were ignorant of the Messiah being in their presence. Jesus also chastened them for not being able to discern or judge among themselves what was right and what was wrong. So you see, we are to judge among ourselves. This is the, the part of the duty of, of those who say that they are believers in Christ. We are to judge. Judgments should be made in righteousness, according to the word of the Lord. In John seven twenty three through 30 to 24, we read, But if a male child is circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses is not broken, why are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath day? Do not judge according to the external appearance, but judge with proper judgment. Jesus is saying, do not make a completed analysis on something solely on the appearance. Go deeper and investigate a matter. See the fruit of it before you rule on it. So here we are clearly commanded to make judgments. Jesus commanded us not to judge something by the way we see it, but judge it in righteousness. Just because you see a married man talking to a female that's not his wife don't assume that they're having an affair or it could be the other way around judging the smallest matters in first corinthians 6 1 through 4 we read dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Again, the duty of judging is given to us in the body of Christ. Now that you hopefully understand God's definition of judging, you will conduct your life in accordance to the Lord's expectations and not according to your own lusts. So you see, some want to defend against judging because they do not want to be called out for the way that they are living if they say that they are born again believers in Jesus Christ. Judging has nothing to do with not having love compassion or showing kindness to someone who says that they are in Christ but living counter to what he has said but it has everything to do with truth we don't judge someone out of anger out of spite or just because we like picking on people but we are to judge because we want to see all men come to the truth especially those that are in the house of God 
So I pray that this message has blessed you and has given you some uh, understanding of what it is to judge and to remind us that we are not to go to the world for our understanding of Scripture. And we're not to follow people who say that they are Christ, but they bear no fruit of it. Amen. God bless you. Until next time. Thank you.